We're gonna take a look at some of our right angle grinders right now. And I've got a piece of cast lead crystal glass. This is from our F2 lead crystal. Now we've got a nice surface on this side from the casting, but of course we've got a lot of kiln shelf texture on this side of the glass. Well, I wanna try and take some of that off and clean it up and make it look a little more presentable. And I'm gonna use some of our right angle grinder tools to do that. What I have set up in here is our Sooner LXB two inch grinder. It's a nice pneumatic grinder, very small, very handy. And I'm gonna show you how this works to try and work some of the back of this cast piece. So you can see on my LXB, I have a water flow going through the center. It's a simple tube that connects to the top of it. It's a pneumatically controlled grinder. Now in a few minutes, you can already see, I've done a pretty good job with this. I still have some areas that I need to go further on, so this is gonna take a little bit longer on my first step, but only a few minutes, and I've covered a good amount of this area with my little LXB two inch grinder. Now if you were to use a four inch, it would cover even a larger area in a shorter amount of time. And I'm gonna keep going a little bit longer on this one on the 60 grit. You can see I've got some deeper divots still that I could try and get out. I may go a little bit further on my 60 grit and then just work those and leave those in there for the next slumping. The Sooner LXB grinder here, it utilizes a two inch backer pad that's Velcro backed. So our little two inch diamond discs simply stick on and off with Velcro. The shaft on the LXB grinder is a quarter inch 20. So this pad just screws right onto it. Water comes through right through the center, as you can see. These pads easily go on and off with Velcro. That was our 60 grit pad. We're gonna try a 120 grit pad now to clean up a little bit further on this surface. Just sticks right on and you're ready to go. Now you can see after a few minutes on the 120 grit, that's a little bit cleaner. You can actually see a little bit more through it. Now each successive grit that you use, you'll end up wanting to go larger and larger concentric circles to try and keep this as flat a surface as uniform as possible so you don't change the optics of the glass by the time you get to a final step. So I'm gonna try a 200 grit after this and we'll keep going. So my 120 grit pad peels right off. And you can see I have my 200 grit pad now. Sticks right on there. And I'm ready to go. And you can see from my 200 grit, I'm an even finer surface. It looks pretty good. It's getting really translucent. Now I can probably skip to one of our electrostatic diamond discs from here, probably in a 120 grit, or I can move on to a 400 grit electroplated. So we're gonna try the 400 grit electroplated. Simply Velcro back material. So my 200 grit strips right off. My 400 grit sticks right on. And here we go. You can see after our 400 grit, our surface is even finer. Got a very nice sheen to it. 
Now what I'll probably do is go to my electrostatic disc now, and I could either go to a 200 or a 400. Since this is a little bit of a larger area for our two inchers, I'm gonna go with a 200 grit electrostatic, and you'll see what that's gonna do for this surface. So the hooks on this two inch pad are very, very stiff and our electrostatic pads are extremely thin. So these might push through the electrostatic disc a little bit and mar the surface of your glass. So we'll include this little spacer. It's basically just a double-sided Velcro, but it's a little bit softer. And it'll give you a little bit of give between the two inch backer and your electrostatic discs. Now this is our 200 grit electrostatic disc. You can see it's a very thin material. These are electrostatic diamonds, so they're actually going to give you a very fine surface on the glass. They're sort of a pre-polished finish. They're not going to do any heavy stock removal, but they are going to clean up the surface so it looks really nice. So that just sticks right onto our Velcro pad, and we're good to go. So our 200 grit electrostatic cleans up pretty quickly. Now the electrostatic discs are gonna be a much finer product. They are a paperback product where the discs are electrostatically charged with diamonds. So they are gonna wear out a little bit faster. You're gonna wear through these a little bit quicker, but they give you a great surface on the glass. They're also terribly inexpensive. So you can afford to buy several of these in the terms of the electroplated discs. So we're gonna move from our 200 now to a 300 grit electrostatic. This is our 300 grit electrostatic. The same process applies. It simply fixes on with Velcro. And we're good to go. I guess after our 300, our cast glasses get getting finer and finer. It's almost you know, got a clear sheen to it. It's very, very nice looking. We'll move now to our 400 and then a 600. Same process applies. Simple Velcro. Our 400 grit electrostatic. Sticks on same routine. And here we go. Now our final electrostatic disc is this 20 micron 600 grit electrostatic. Same process, sticks right onto our grinder by Velcro. And here we go. Now this is after our 600 grit electrostatic. Now that's looking really good. There's probably a couple of places in the corners that I can see that maybe I didn't get quite far enough, but overall that's a pretty good surface. There's not a whole lot of visual distortion in the glass, so it's gonna polish up really nicely. Now you can take this, put it back into the kiln and slump it, and you're gonna get a really nice surface out of this. You can fire polish it, or you can go all the way to a chemical polish with a cerium impregnated pad or a felt pad with cerium oxide, but that's looking really, really nice. Now for polishing, one of the things we make is this 3M cerium impregnated Triazac material. It's a great stuff. You don't have to use any cerium slurry with it. It's just Velcro back. Water activates the cerium on the surface. And it's got these little microscopic pyramids in here of the actual cerium. So the same process applies with this. Just Velcro's back on here. All you need is enough water on there to activate the cerium. And we'll get to town on this. Now you can see that the cerium pads are not gonna last a tremendously long time. You will wear through the cerium on these. So you're gonna replace these a little more often than if you were using a felt pad with cerium slurry. But for surfaces that you need to get done very, very quickly, 
it's worth the investment on these if you're making enough money on those surfaces. You can see this is a pretty good polish. Uh, you can see my lights reflecting in there. You can see my hand all the way through it. Now I have some areas still in the corners and the sides that I didn't quite get to or I didn't get quite far enough on my earlier stages, so they're going to take a lot longer to polish. But the main area of my glass is looking fantastic. The right angle grinders with the diamond pads do an absolutely fantastic job on these cast surfaces.